everyone. So it looks like we have 24 participants so far. We will wait till approximately 10 and a few minutes afterwards to start our yoga class today. Hi everyone. So I do have everyone currently on mute. And we'll start our practice in, in approximately 11 minutes. Uh, there is a chat window if you select one of the icons uh, just below in between participants and share screen. You have the option to input any comments. Hey, Eva, hi. It's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see everyone. Hi, Julie. Hi, how are you? I had my uh, microphone on mute because I guess I'll keep it on mute while you're doing the, uh, the class. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what we're gonna do. We are. I am mean, gonna put this on mute so that way, um, you know, everyone can enjoy the benefits of the practice. We'll wait for as many people to join as possible. We have a very large crowd that has confirmed attendance. We have approximately slightly over seventy people. Um, oh yeah. So we'll see. You know how uh, how it turns out. But for now, you know, just set yourself up. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hang tight and wait for everyone to join. I will uh, speak briefly to some best practices of how to video conference for those that aren't familiar. Hi. <laughs> and um, this will be posted on YouTube as well. We will have a recording. It will be posted on the Vanderbilt page, on my page, and, um, and on my website. So, okay, great. Yeah, we all look our worst right now, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, and no hesitancy if you need to, you know, you can mute your camera. So on the bottom left uh, where the mute icon is, you can stop your video and you can just watch me stream, watch me do yoga, you know, go at your own pace if you want. And you, um, you actually do an audio of it as you're doing poses? Is that how it goes? Absolutely. So you should be able to hear me while I speak. I, I am closer to the microphone, so I will be easier to hear. I did test the speakers. Uh, let me just admit more people here. I did test the speakers a moment ago. Uh, just stepping back here by my yoga mat, you should be able to hear me uh, just as well. Sure. Thank you. So I'm around. I'm just going to, I'm in my son's room because he has the best floor for yoga it's like a wooden floor <laughs> so I, I go in his room so I'm around I will let's see if I could reconfigure this I never did zoom on the phone I only did it on my computer so so I do work for a video conferencing company so I do this 10 times a day this is you know second nature um, yeah but for those of you that aren't familiar I will quickly, you know, closer to 10 o'clock, we'll just navigate sure. uh, the, the tools and features of, of Zoom. Okay, so are you going to automatically mute me? Is that how it goes? You're going to mute everybody or uh, will we mute ourselves? You can mute yourselves. Upon entry, uh, everyone is automatically muted. But oh, I'll good. All right, here we are. Okay, you're all set, Julie. <laughs> Hi. I just wanted to thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. It's great. Of course, anytime. And we have 31 participants so far. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're, we're again going to wait till closer to 10 o'clock to start. And, there, and no obligation to use your screen. I know some of you would prefer yeah. to mute that. So <laughs> do that. Do you know if you can Chromecast this to? The TV. So what? What I have my I currently have my laptop, and I could even show you. So here's my my television. Um, if you have a smart TV, you have the ability to use an HDMI cord. Now, if your laptop has an output to connect this to it, you can stream it using um, 
you know, the different mode of your television. So you can, if you want to. But she's on the phone. Yeah, so you can use, oh, from your phone, uh, from your phone, that I'm not sure of, unless you have like an Apple TV or something to mirror the image from your phone onto your computer. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So also too, you know, I am going to post this on YouTube. So um, if you do have a smart TV or if you have a bigger, you know, computer, you want to watch this again, um, you may. And that's going to be posted hopefully within the hour. The recording is very quick. So we'll have that posted pretty soon. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let's go ahead. I'm going to just start muting everyone just to make sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Connect. Perfect. Chat. <sighs> Hey, Jennifer, how long do you think this is going to be? So this will be approximately an hour. Now, knowing me, it'll probably go a little bit over. <laughs> uh, so what's really great about practicing this at home is you can stop at any time you want to. You can revisit this recording at a different time. So if I do go over a little bit and you have another obligation, no worries, you can always revisit the recording. Um, but my goal is to have this uh, for from 10 to 11. So is the recording, do you need a name to look it up on YouTube or just today, the time and the date, you know, if we so, wanted to look at it later? So what, what I'll do is I'll follow up. If you registered on uh, popupkanayoga.com, I will follow up with an email with the link. You should already have access to the link to my YouTube page and the Vanderbilt YouTube page. All you need to do is click on that and the video will be there. Yeah, you see, I don't think I registered. So I just okay. went to YouTube. I don't know. So if I go to YouTube, I'll still find it, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Oops, okay, perfect. Okay, so let's admit we have four more. Okay, so we're just four minutes away. We are currently at 40 participants. And one more. And one more. Oh, here we go. We have. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, perfect. Can you see me, Jen? I can see you. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Can okay. everybody else see me, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to mute you really quickly. Sure, honey. I know we're early. I'm, I'm anxious. This is great. Wonderful. So, so far we have 44 participants. Um, some of you might have, depending on your view, you might have gallery view. So if you click on the top right, you should have the option for speaker view. So that way um, my screen will pop up and that'll be the primary screen. Charlotte. <laughs> wow, this is so nice to see everyone here. Okay, we have two more waiting. I'm gonna have to leave a few minutes early, so thank you. Oh, of course, anytime. I'm going to repeat this um, just when, when we start, but this will be recorded. So if you do have to leave early, you can always revisit this practice. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome.
Good morning. Thank you. I wasn't sure how to say good morning. I'm trying to figure it out. I never did this. Good morning. Yes. So I appreciate appreciate you joining. Um, so I have muted everyone upon entry. Uh, there is a mute icon uh, when looking at the screen at the bottom left if you're on a laptop or a desktop feature. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to start in a few short minutes. We still have a number of people attending. We're currently at 53 participants. Good morning. Good morning. This is my first time with you. I'm excited. Oh, wonderful. Great. Yeah, this is going to be an all levels yoga class. Uh, most of my classes tend to be all level. I will start very slow, very, very slow, and then we will increase um, difficulty variations and speed as we go. And uh, throughout, uh, throughout the you know, practice, I, I will show you a number of variations, uh, how to use yoga blocks, how to use blankets, things of that nature, so we have an understanding. Good. Great. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, continue to mute everyone. All right, we have two more. Okay. Oh, two more here. Oh. Committing all approaching 60 participants. Just going to wait for one more moment. We have a lot of last minute participants joining. We're at 62. Okay, I am going to briefly talk about our yoga practice today. This is an all levels yoga practice. Now this is obviously a little bit different than um, taking it in person, which, uh, you know, there are many advantages to this, of course. Some advantages include doing this at your own pace, right? There is no obligation to share your video. You can hide your video at any time. You can also go at your own pace. If there is a pose that's too challenging and does not agree with you, I am relying on you and um, your knowledge of your body to, to pause for a moment. Generally speaking, sharp pain, any stress on the joints, um, you know, if you feel any of those things, you wanna stop and just take a moment to, you know, catch up with your breath. One of the most important elements of our practice is breathing right? Otherwise, that's an exercise. So we always want to focus on our breath throughout our practice. Insofar as best practices, I do work with a technology company called IVCI. So for me, Zoom is second nature. For those of you that are not familiar with Zoom, if depending on your gallery view, you might see a bunch of small little boxes of about three pages of that, or you can look at speaker view. So I am going to share my screen so you can go ahead and see what I'm seeing. Okay. So you might see a whole bunch of boxes like this. Now when I share my screen, this does minimize like so. Uh, what you wanna do here are the different options. You wanna see speaker view here. So you just double click on my face and from your view, you should be able to see it expand on your computer. So I'm just gonna quickly stop sharing. Um, you can also do this when you're looking at your desktop on the very top uh, part of the top right-hand part of your screen. You're gonna see like a little uh, box 
and then you're going to see speaker view. So make sure you click on that. I automatically should show up because I'm the only speaker. Everyone should be muted. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it insofar as participating. You can, if there, for some reason you need to communicate something to me, there is a chat feature on the bottom part of the screen, right uh, near the center, right by where share screen is and participants. So you can send me a quick chat. It will be difficult for me to see it since I will be sitting back here by my yoga mat. But that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna change into speaker view so I can see myself and then you'll see a strip of individuals and participants on the very top. Any questions? Okay, so you have the ability either to unmute yourself or to uh, drop a question in. <laughs> so I see hum scary thought, okay. <laughs> Now remember, this is recorded, so you can, if you want to, you can mute your, yourself, and then you can also mute your video. If you don't want to share any information, you can rename yourself as well. Okay. All right, so let us begin. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. So my name is Jennifer Egan. I am the owner and creator of Papa Prana Yoga. And on behalf of the Vanderbilt Museum, we are very, very thankful for all of you attending. We're now at 75 participants here. So this is, even though it may not feel like it, since we're all at home, we have a very, very big community. So that's something to be exceptionally grateful for. The ability that technology has to facilitate our communication and connect us in many different ways is also very underrated. So thank you again for participating. If you did register at Pop Up Prana Yoga with a notification, you will receive a follow-up email because this is going to be recorded and it will be posted in a few different ways. One will be posted on a video, will be posted on popupranayoga.com. We also have the Vanderbilt website, uh, the Vanderbilt website, which they plan on hopefully posting. And um, in the very least, we'll have it on our YouTube, both of our YouTube pages, the Vanderbilt Museum uh, YouTube page and the Pop Up Prana Yoga YouTube page. I will again follow up the email with that. And uh, if you can't find it, you can always go to my website. It will be posted there as well. Okay, now again, this is an all levels yoga practice. So we are gonna start very slow and then build up with the options to skip. For those of our advanced yoga practitioners, we can skip any vinyasa. So that way, you know, again, we're focusing on our entire wellness and um, not necessarily persevering through the practice, but really taking your time to acquaint yourself with each pose and breathing throughout the practice. That's key. I will start with a very simple breathing exercise and uh, we'll start in a seated position. Now, there are a few ways you can start. So for example, you can start seated in this pose. If you would prefer, if this is pretty hard on your knees, you can find a seated position with your legs crossed. More advanced practitioners can find a half lotus or a full lotus, again, options. In the very beginning though, uh, you might want to just start very gently. Begin to close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, begin to acquaint yourself with your body. Slowly inhale through your nose, lifting your chest, feeling your rib cage expand. And then as you exhale, begin to drop your shoulders, relax the backs of your hands, just a neutral stance, a neutral neck, exhaling out of your nose. Then slowly inhale, repeat. Now feel your body, right? Your entire chest expand as you inhale, your body lifting, top of your head rises toward the sky. And then as you exhale, the reverse, right? The collapsing of your shoulders your breath. We're going to add some difficulty here. So we're going to add a count 
to our breath, right? To really test the boundaries of how we breathe. So now as you're sitting, as you're closing your eyes, slowly inhale for five, four, three, two, one, pause. Then slowly exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now this time with your fingers, I want you to feel your body, right? Feel your chest as you breathe into your hands. So you're gonna spread your fingertips really wide onto your rib cage. Still gently close your eyes, really tune into your breath, right? Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale out of your nose, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. One more set. Inhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Placing your hands onto your thighs or maybe yeah, onto your hands. Now, what you can also do is you can flip your palms up toward the sky as you relax your shoulders. If you're looking for more of a grounding energy, hands can be placed onto your thighs as you breathe. Begin to close your eyes at this time. On your next inhale, begin to extend your arms toward the sky so your fingertips are really reaching toward the ceiling. And then as you exhale, hands in prayer. So you're pressing your hands and your palms toward the center of your heart. Close your eyes and set your intention for your practice. What draw you to your practice? What is it that is inspiring you today? On your next deep inhale, begin to interlace your hands. And exhale, press your palms away. Inhale, lengthen your arms up toward the sky. Exhale, gently release your fingertips on either side of your hips. Relax your shoulders. Close your eyes, take a deep breath breath as I allow more people into the room and then as you exhale gently relax your shoulders back or really press your shoulder blades back and down now on your next deep inhale begin to extend your fingertips toward the sky really reach well relax your shoulders and then as you exhale left hand to right knee right palm behind you now as you inhale you want to elevate up toward the sky so your right hand you don't want that really far back. You want that right close to your hip and then twist. Okay, slowly inhale, come back to center. So extend your left arm and your right. And exhale, opposite side. So right hand reaches to your left knee, left palm behind you. Remember, not that far back. You want to come close to your hips. So twisting from your shoulders. Inhale back to center, extend your arms toward the sky. And then very slowly as you exhale, find a forward fold. What you want to do is you want to maintain a very flat back. Your fingertips can be here as you draw your chest to the ground. And then as you inhale, you can walk your fingertips as far forward as possible. Now this is why we can use a block. If you don't have blocks, you can use a book, anything that will slightly elevate your hands up. You can use one block, you can use blankets, and slowly extend your palms forward. 
Inhale, flatten your back, meaning your shoulders come in alignment with your hips, gaze forward. Exhale, very gently fold. Inhale, come back to center. So walk your hands up towards your hips, maybe onto your thighs. And then as you exhale, roll your shoulders back. Okay, so coming back to center, we're going to add a slightly challenging arm variation called eagle arms. So on your next inhale, begin to extend your arms toward the sky. Now option one, very easy option as you exhale, right arm hooks underneath left, you can reach for opposite shoulders right here. If you are here, you can inhale, extend your arms up toward the sky. Now otherwise, with eagle arms, you're going to wrap your right arm around your left, see if you can connect your palms, and then gently inhale, lift your arms. Okay, now as you inhale, you're going to lift your arms slightly, like so, and then as you exhale, you're going to roll your shoulders back. You'll feel it more intensely in your arms. Okay, so you're here or here. Inhale, deep breath. Then as you exhale, See if you can gently twist to the right side. Okay, you'll feel that more intensely in the left side of your body. Gently inhale, come back to center. Exhale, gentle twist to the left. Now, if you can't quite, quite go too far, it's not a big deal. You can come very slightly, maybe turn your neck a little bit deeper. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, gently unravel your arms on either side of your hips. Okay, so again, coming back to center. Inhale, extending your arms toward the sky. This time, as you exhale, right hand comes to the ground. Inhale, gaze up, look at your left hand. So extending up and then gently exhale, reaching toward the right side. Okay, now continue to breathe in. Your left shoulder continues to pull back, right? You're not coming forward like this, right? You're shifting back as if you're pressing up against the wall. On your next inhale, begin to extend your left arm and then just control your right arm toward the sky. Exhale, hands in prayer towards your heart. So notice our breath to movement pattern. This is vinyasa, okay? So inhale, extend your arms toward the sky, really reach. Exhale, left hand to the ground. Inhale, gaze up, lengthen, reach toward the ceiling, reach toward the sky. And this time, exhale, energy toward the left, Side, good, very good. Now more advanced practitioners, you can inhale, you can drop onto your forearm, but you wanna make sure your right hip is pressing into the ground. You're not lifting your hip to reach your forearm down. Inhale, rise, extend your right arm and then your left foot control. One more time, exhale, find a forward fold. Reaching your fingertips as far forward as possible. And then slowly inhale, roll onto your knees for tabletop. So we'll start from the side here. Now the tabletop is the foundation of your, your downward facing dog. Proper alignment in tabletop is the same. So your pointer finger is forward, your thumb is pointed toward one another. So a mirror image of an L. Fingertips spread really wide, elbows in alignment with your hands. So you're like this. Elbows in. Knees are directly underneath hips, belly really flat, tops of your feet planted onto the ground. Inhale, deep breath. Now just isolating your spine as you exhale, arch your back, really press into your palms, gaze at your thighs, this is cat pose. Just isolating the spine, inhale, cow. So you're dropping your belly button toward the mat, gaze up, squeeze your shoulder blades. And exhale, arch. Inhale, 
inhale, this is cow pose as you drop your belly, you gaze up, squeeze your shoulder blades. And exhale, arch. Now we're incorporating our toes. Now that as you inhale, curl your toes, drop your belly button, gaze up. And exhale, cat pose. One more count. Inhale, curl your toes, lift your gaze. And final cat, tops of your feet planted, arch your back, pressing into your palms, gaze at your thighs. Inhale, tabletop, lateral flexion. So inhale, gaze forward. And as you exhale, side crunch. So you're gazing over your right shoulder, hips are fit, gaze to right foot. Inhale, forward. Exhale, left. Inhale, forward. Exhale, right. Inhale, forward. Exhale, left. Inhale, forward. Exhale, very first child pose. Now in child pose, you can do it one of two ways. You can connect your knees, sit back on your heels, palms forward. You can separate your knees. Notice my big toes are connected, my feet are connected. And then you can shift back for a wide-legged extended child pose. Third option, in one of the two variations, you can extend your palms behind you, palms look toward the sky, or head to the ground. So this is a more intense variation with your head pressing onto the ground. If you want to add an additional variation, one of my favorites, if you happen to have blocks, you can extend one the long way, or you can extend both for each hand, Create slight elevation for your chest to drop a little bit deeper. So you're in the pose and you're breathing, you're gently closing your eyes, you are bowing down to your practice, you're taking time for yourself to adjust, to breathe, find any discomfort in any parts of your body. So as you're inhaling with every additional inhale, you're gonna inch your fingertips as far forward as possible in child pose. And then as you exhale, continue to sink your hips closer to your heels, even if it's ever so slightly, right? Just relax. Inhale, deep breath. So feel your belly button rise to your spine, extend your fingertips forward. And then as you exhale, continue to sink your hips in child pose. If you're just joining us now, find your child pose in time, Take your intention, right? Manifest that intention, set it, whatever that might be for your practice today, and breathe. Slowly inhale, place your palms underneath your shoulders, separate your knees about hips distance apart, Shoulders over palms, hips over knees. Inhale, extend your right arm forward, thumb pointed toward the side, gaze down about one inch in front of your mat. Exhale, extend your left foot. Spinal balance. Now what we don't wanna do is you do not wanna stack your left hip over your right, right. you wanna keep dropping your left hip, flexing your left foot, so don't point, flex. Take one more breath, inhale. Keep reaching in opposite direction. And then exhale, connect knee to elbow. Inhale, very slowly with control, extend, right? So no momentum. And exhale, gently try to connect. Arch your back, channel your cat pose, gaze at your left knee. Inhale, extend. 
Now, as you exhale, press your right palm to the earth. Inhale, right your heel comes slightly to the right side, maybe off of your mat. And maybe stack your left hip over your right. Your weight is going to pour into your right palm. You can stay right here. More advanced option, left shoulder over right. Left palm lifts toward the sky. Slowly exhale with control. So left palm, right heel in alignment with your knee. Drop your left hip. Drop your toes. Inhale. And exhale, left knee place to the earth. Opposite side. Inhale, extend your left arm. Exhale, kick your right heel away. Drop your hip. Inhale, reach in opposite directions. Exhale, connect. You can again always drop your toe, your right foot if you need to. You can always extend in this direction. Inhale, reach. And exhale, connect if you have a bit of a balance issue. Otherwise, lift your foot one more time. Inhale, really, really reach. Exhale, left palm to the earth. Inhale, create a kickstand with your left foot. So your left foot comes slightly off of your left mat. Right hip over left. You can keep your right palm down or extend your right arm toward the sky. If you have an issue with your balance here, you can drop your right foot as an option. And slowly exhale, right palm to the earth. Square off your hips, left foot in alignment with your right knee, and then right knee meets left. Inhale, curl your toes, lift your gaze, find cow, gaze up. Exhale, cat. Inhale, tabletop, so flat spine. Hip in alignment with shoulders. Exhale, extended child pose. Breathe. In child pose, once again, if you're just joining, stay in child pose, take a breath, deep inhale. Keep inching your fingertips as far forward as possible. And then as you exhale, keep sinking your hips closer to your heels. Keep sinking, sinking, sinking. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale, curl your toes for downward facing dogs. So you're lifting your knees, shifting your hips up and back. Now, if you feel a lot of tension in your legs, if your legs are very tight, you can bend your knees and try to flatten out your back like so. If this is always an issue, you can always stay right here in your tabletop pose. Otherwise, you're inhaling. Now as you exhale, press into your palms. Gaze at your thighs. Draw your heels toward the ground. Inhale, deep breath. And exhale, keep shifting your weight to your heels. Inhale, walk your feet between your hands, very slowly to a flat back. So feet come between your hands. You can elevate your hands onto your thighs, slight bend to your knees to protect your back, head away from hips. You could be here, here, or here, or here. Exhale, fold. So torso toward your thighs. You can bend your knees again. Try to connect your chest to your thighs. Relax your arms over your legs. As you inhale, interlace your hands. Press your hands behind your head. Now you're gonna use your arms as weight as you exhale, relax your arms over your head and maybe sway from side to side. Inhale, continue to breathe. Maybe slightly straighten your legs, very slightly. Remember, no pain, no tension. And then as you exhale, use the weight of your arms and your hands to sink. Next, inhale, release your hands on either side of your feet toward your toes. 
and exhale, just relax. Inhale, chin to chest, press through your feet, tighten your glutes and rise to a standing position. Tadasana pose. Now in Tadasana pose, your feet are about hips distance apart. You can use your fist to measure the distance between your feet. Toes are very separated. You're pressing evenly through all four corners of your feet. You're, you're broadening your chest. You're squeezing your shoulder blades. Draw them back and down. Now, notice your pelvis. It might stick out a little bit. So you might want to press your pelvis forward, tighten your glutes as your shoulders extend behind you. Sun Salutation A, we're going to go very slow with Sun Salutation A. If you have it, go for it. You can go at your own pace. I will start very basic and then offer the advanced sequence about the third, after the third vinyasa. You may not see my arms though, so I will do a cactus variation so you can see my arms. Inhale, deep breath, so here's the cactus, or you can extend your arms toward the sky. As you exhale, find a fold, fingertips toward the earth, very slow exhale. Inhale, flat back. So hands can be on your thighs right here, head away from hips, slight bend to your knees, here or here. As you exhale, find plank pose. Now same exhale to knees, chest and chin. So you're pressing into your palms. If your palms hurt, you can interlace your hip. You can create this straddle, pressing your knuckles into the ground and you can extend one foot and then the other one behind you. If this does not agree with you, you can drop your knees. Okay, so plank pose. Two knees, chest, and chin. So just that. Knees drop. Chest drops between your hands. Chin on breath. Inhale, slide forward to cobra pose. So almost like you're creating a mermaid tail, right? So you're connecting your big toes. You're pressing the tops of your feet to the ground. Zip your legs. Lift your chest, palms onto the earth. Use your lower back. So don't press into your palms. Just use the strength of your back. And then as you exhale, downward facing dog. So curl your toes, drop your knees with a flat back. And then find downward facing dog. Find a few breaths. Inhale. Walk, step, or float your feet to a flat back. So walk your feet between your hands, hands on your thighs, shins on the ground. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to upward salute. So you're pressing through your feet. Tighten your glutes, squeeze your shoulder blades, arms lift toward the sky, or cactus, our variation. Exhale, hands towards your heart. So that was one sun salutation A. Okay, if that was too difficult, you can stay in downward facing dog. Or take a rest in child pose. Second set. Inhale, upward salute or cactus arms, lift your chest face up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to your vinyasa. So this time we're pressing into your palms. You can skip the vinyasa or step right back to downward facing dog here or plank pose. Okay, so from here, there's another option aside from knees, chest, and chin. There's gentle upward facing dog. So you're pressing the tops of your feet and your shins to the ground, pelvis forward, shoulders roll back. Lift your gaze. You really want to press into your palms and not collapse in your low back. Then curl your toes with control, find downward facing dog. Inhale, walk, step, or float your feet to a flat back, gaze forward. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, right. Exhale, hands on either side of your hips. Mountain pose, Tadasana pose. Third step. Inhale, rise, upward salute. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, vinyasa. So this is the more advanced option. You can step back straight to plank pose. Now here you may find Chaturanga Dandasana. Chaturanga Dandasana is a push-up. So notice the 90 degree angles of my elbow, chest forward, flat spine. Inhale, tops of your feet on the ground, knees elevated, knees up. And exhale, curl your toes, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Inhale, empty your nose. Exhale, press into your palms, weight towards your heels. Inhale, deep breath. Gently exhale, see if you can challenge your exhale. Two more breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Next, inhale, walk. Step or float your feet to a flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, upward salute or cactus arms. Exhale, hands towards your heart. Okay, so let's start our balance sequence. So starting in mountain pose, I'm gonna show you a very, very basic tree pose, and then we'll build into a much more advanced option. For advanced yogis, we have the option for a half lotus and tree pose. We also have the option for horse pose or toe stand. If you'd like at this moment, you can also grab some water, right? No obligation to stay through, you know, and plow through the practice. So again, take your time. All right, let's do it. So hands in prayer, thumbs towards your heart. First, start with your eyes closed. We're going to challenge, challenge your balance without really finding much movement in your feet. Feet about hips distance apart. Inhale, deep breath. Exhale, shift your weight to the left foot. Inhale, pop your right heel. Exhale, right heel to left leg. Inhale, see if you can lift your right foot very slowly, right? Maybe lift your toes. And then as you exhale, just find your balance. Remember your eyes are still closed here, so you're really challenging your balance here. Then next inhale, begin to open your eyes. Now with your right heel, you can place your right heel on your left calf. If that is too challenging, you can drop your toes. If you have a wall beside you, you can hold on to the wall and find your balance here. Otherwise, second option, your foot comes above the knee, so I'm going to go on the knee to apply tension on your joint, so below or above. If you're here, your heel is digging really hard into your thigh, right? You're really flexing your right foot. Place your hands in prayer, so thumb towards your heart. Third option, half lotus. Okay, so if you have a half lotus, the best way to get into it is almost like you're coming into a pigeon variation. So this is an advanced option. You don't need to take this. It's just a visual. Now, if you're here, you want to cradle your right foot and tap your right heel as high up your hip as possible. Create a basket and gently relax your right knee down. You can continue to hold your right foot with your left hand, or if you have this pose, you can place your hands in prayer here. 
And any variation here, here, or below, the additional challenge is to extend your arms toward the sky, cactus arms or a deep extension. Whichever variation you're in, stay. Close your eyes. If you want to, you can start with one eyes closed for more of a challenge and just breathe. Our advanced practitioners, we have the additional variation. I'll start with course pose. Remember, if you do not feel comfortable doing this, I do not recommend you try. So watch me first and then explore. So hands in prayer, very slowly begin to drop your chest to the ground. Remember to test your balance here, right? You're not swaying from side to side, and you're really firmly pressing into your left foot. Eventually, your fingertips can to the ground, maybe your palms. Stay here for a breath. If you have the flexibility without any pain, your right knee, very top of your right knee, is placed to the ground. Okay, so right fingertips to the ground, top of your right knee to the ground. From here, begin to step your left foot to a 45 degree angle, creating stability. If you have your balance, it's gonna be a very intense stretch right here in the quad. You can stack your shoulders over your hips. And for the, for the full pose, right arm underneath left, revisiting those eagle arms, right? Connect your palms, lift your chest. Okay, so trees or horses, very slowly unravel your arms, begin to press your fingertips and your palms into the earth. Coming up with control is even more imperative, even more important, because we do not want to fall out of the pose and injure ourselves. So you can just center your left foot, press into your palms, into your foot. So like the pose before, shifting the weight from your hands onto your feet. Hands in prayer, very slowly press into your left foot. Guide your right foot to the ground and place your right foot to the earth. Everyone together, sun breath. On your next inhale, let's reset our breath. Extend your fingertips toward the sky. Beautiful. Hands in prayer, exhale, forward fold, straight through the heart, fingertips toward the earth. Inhale, flat back, so head away from hips. Exhale, fold, so fingertips toward the ground, forehead toward the earth. Inhale, rise with control, so press through your feet, tighten your glutes, arms look toward the sky. And exhale, hands toward your heart. Eyes closed, straight to the opposite side, tree pose. Inhale, pop your left heel. Exhale, left heel to right leg. Inhale, flex your left foot. Exhale, maybe stay here for a breath. And inhale, open your eyes. Find your tree pose. So it helps with your balance too. You wanna to keep pressing into your right foot. Sometimes your right knee might be bent a little bit. So that will, think of a chair, right? Stability, you wanna create stability from the ground up. So keep pressing and pushing your right foot into the earth. Maybe find this pose. Or this. Now throughout the pose, you're breathing. That is the key here, the right? So you want to make sure you're constantly breathing. Otherwise, it turns into an exercise of labor. If you took your half lotus on the right side, do so on the left for balance. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to stay with our tree poses. Eventually, maybe extending your arms toward the sky if you're in tree pose, here or here.
And now with control, if you are in horse pose, come up very slowly to meet your tree pose. And tree poses very slowly as you exhale, hands and prayer thumbs toward your heart. Inhale, send to your left knee, and then very slowly exhale, left foot meets right mountain pose. Standing at the very top of your mat. Inhale, lift your arms toward the sky here or here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. So advanced practitioners, if you'd like to incorporate your arm balance, like crow pose, you can to your sequence. As you exhale, you can find your vinyasa, so like we practiced before. So I'm gonna do a very advanced sequence here, crow into our vinyasa. You do not need to take crow, you can step right back here to downward facing dog. Okay, so here we are in crow pose. Gazing forward, so you're really tapping your right heel as far towards your right glute as you can. Weight tips forward. Slowly step back. You're going to hop back, extending your right foot on your left, straight to your chaturanga. Inhale, maybe to upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Drop your knees, drop your seat, find a quick child pose. Reset, take a breath. Inhale, elevate your elbows off of your mat, fingertips on the ground, elevate your wrists. As you exhale, walk your hands to the right side. A bit of a lateral stretch in your lower left hip, you'll feel that very much. Deep breath. As you inhale, lift your chest very slightly. And then as you exhale, try to drop your left shoulder a little bit deeper. Inhale, fingertips forward. Exhale, left side. Inhale, maybe walk your fingertips further forward to the left. And this time, exhale, emphasize dropping your right shoulder to intensify your stretch on the right side. Inhale, fingertips forward. As you exhale, relax your elbows. Inhale, rise to tabletop, shoulders over palms. Exhale, curl your toes into downward facing dog. So left foot center on your mat. Okay, I'm actually gonna go in this direction so you can see. Inhale, right foot lifts toward the sky. So now when you're doing your three-legged dog, you wanna make sure that your right hip is not stacked over your left, that your right hip is dropped and your right foot is flexed. If you feel tension here, bend your left knee. Inhale, foot between your hands. So you want to stack your left heel over your toes for slight elevation. Draw your right knee towards your chest. Place your right foot down. If you need to, you can help your right foot forward. Okay, runner's lunge. As you inhale, drop the top of your left knee, top of your foot. Pelvis forward. You can interlace your hands right here or extend your arms toward the sky. As you exhale, bend deeper in your right knee. Inhale, fingertips up toward the sky. Exhale, hands in prayer. As you inhale, see if you can very slowly shift your chest to the right side. It could be very slight. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, release your hands on either side of your right foot. Hamstring stretch. Blocks, if you have them, 
It's a great tool to use in this type of situation. So you can use two blocks. And what you can do is you can frame the blocks on either side of your foot. So like so. Okay, so notice the blocks are evenly placed on either side. You can place them horizontally or vertically for higher elevation. Okay, the idea here is that you're very slowly straightening your right leg. Notice my right foot is flexed. If you do not have blocks, fingertips, okay? Do not lock your right leg. Slight bend to your right knee. Left hip forward, that will intensify your hip. Rather than dropping your hip back, keep dropping or pulling it forward. Advanced practitioners, this transitions into a split. Hanu Minasana is the pose. So what you can do here is you can continue to walk your fingertips forward. Guide your forehead towards your right leg. If you have blocks, you can do the very same thing. Or if you want to transition into Hanumanasana and you happen to have blocks, your left knee can slowly inch back toward the mat. You can press into the blocks and extend your left foot in the opposite direction. Okay. Hanumanasana, so you can visually see the pose, is like so. You can use the very same tool here if you're right about here. You want to continue to pull your left hip over your right hip back. Full pose, arms up toward the sky. Okay. Now to come out of the pose, press into your palms. You're going to inch your left knee closer and closer. Remember, you can be here. Right? There's no shame in being here. Now we're going to come into our low lunge. So readjust your right foot. Bend your right knee so your right knee comes just above your right heel. Pelvis forward, feel the stretch in your left leg. And begin to extend your arms toward the sky. Good, low lunge. Okay, so we're in low lunge, bending your right knee. Left hip forward, extend your arms toward the sky. Then as you exhale, hands, bring your right foot. We'll come right into lizard pose. So in lizard pose, your right foot is going to step toward the outer edge of the mat. Right palm underneath your right shoulder, left palm underneath your right. So it should look like this. Still alignment, right? Still downward facing dog alignment right here. Now in lizard pose, you can make this pose fairly easier by drawing your left knee closer towards your heel. So if this is too challenging, you can be right here. For more of a challenge, you can extend your left knee pretty far back or even elevate. Okay, so that adds the balance. Once you find what feels right for you, drop onto one forearm. The left is the easiest, so drop onto your left side and then your right. Blocks, you can use your blocks here in any direction. You can be right here, right? Here, or here. Okay, very slowly, starting with the left side. Inhale, press into your left palm and then your right. As you exhale, curl your left foot, curl your toes. Inhale, lift your left knee. Right foot steps back to downward facing dog. You can always come out from here too, from tabletop. Right knee meets left, downward facing dog. All right, opposite side. Right foot center on your mat. Inhale, left foot lifts toward the side. Continue to press into your chest. As you exhale, right heel over toes. Left knee towards your chest. Try to place your foot silently to the ground and help your left foot forward. Inhale to your low lunge, top of your right foot, knee to the ground. You can be right here or you can find this pose. Exhale, hands in prayer. Inhale, twist to the left side. 
Exhale, center. Inhale, right. Exhale, center. Inhale, straight to your half monkey pose or Ardha Hanumanasana pose. You can come right here. If this is where you are and you want a little bit of an extra challenge, see if you can hover. Remember, your right leg is steady and firm to the ground if you're finding this pose. You can be right here, you can find this pose here. Otherwise, hands on either side of your left leg. Monkey pose, you can come right into the pose, extending your left leg forward. Even if, now usually one side is more challenging than the other, maybe this side might be more challenging, you can slightly elevate here. Try not to lock your left leg. Okay, so do your best to breathe. Slowly come out of the pose. So your right knee gently inches forward. Left foot forward. Bend your left knee. So knee over ankle into your lizard pose. So your left foot steps slightly to the left side to allow your left palm to come underneath your left shoulder. It's gonna let this person in here. Okay, so now we're in lizard pose on the left side if you're just joining. So left foot steps slightly to the left side. Left palm directly underneath your left shoulder. Same for the right side. Remember right knee can come pretty close to your left heel. You can stay right here. More of a challenge, extend your right knee further away. And then maybe elevate. I prefer to stay right here in a more relaxed version. Easier option, drop onto your right forearm. You can be here, or maybe both. Locks are an option, as said before. You can place them flat like so, for a slightly higher elevation, like so, or even higher, like so. Breathe. Breathe. Slowly come up, pressing into your right palm and then your left. Firmly press your palms into the ground. This time we'll come in an easier variation. So as you exhale, left knee meets right. Inhale, puppy pose. Puppy pose, right? So belly very close to your spine. You're sinking your belly in. Hips over knees. And begin to walk your palms forward. Now you're gazing at your thighs and you're pressing into your palms. You can start here. If you'd like to do a deeper variation, a hyperextension, you can. And you can begin to flip your hips so your hips drop closer to your thighs. Gaze up and try to drop your chest to the ground. Very slowly. Walk your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale. Exhale, extended child pose. Go ahead. So we have about three minutes left. From extended child pose, you're going to very slowly walk your hands towards your hips. Come to one side, swing your legs forward, Find straight legs. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining Carmela. Okay, so we are extending your right heel and your left. Okay. So here this is stop pose. Stop your shoulders over your hips. Hands on either side of your hips. Lift your chest. Squeeze your shoulder blades. In this pose, you want to press as hard as you can. So tension, right? Like you're pressing into your fist, except you're pushing the ground away from you. You're lifting your chest. Heels are pressing as hard as they can into the ground. Keep pressing and pushing, right? 
So here's a very creative way of using straps. We're going to find a forward fold. So as you inhale, send your fingertips toward the sky. And then as you exhale, reaching your hands towards your toes. Now with a strap, you can find obviously a yoga strap that you can use to hook around your feet. Now, if you have a strap, you place it right on the ball mounds of your feet to continue to flex your foot, so not the heels, toward the toes, and pull your chest toward your thighs. Now let's get creative. Another option, sweater. Okay, we have these really long sleeves. You can do the very same thing with a sweater, right? You can kind of curl it up like so, then roll it up, place the jacket part onto your feet, and here you go, you have the straps right there. You can hold them like this and continue to walk your hands toward your toes. And wherever you are, whether you're here with a strap or just reaching for your toes, chest is flat toward your legs. Begin to walk your hand very slowly behind you, bend your knees, inch your seat forward. We'll come onto our backs, pressing both shoulder blades into the ground, palms lift toward the sky. Hi, Betty. Thanks for joining. We're on our back right now in variation of corpse pose. So we're bending our knees here, flattening out your feet, placing your palms toward the sky. Recline pigeon pose. So with your right knee, you're going to bend your right knee. Interlace your hands here for a moment. Now your right heel will be placed right above your left knee. Okay. Your right foot is flexed and your right knee is pulled away. Flatten out your back. So here's a different perspective of the pose. So notice my right foot is flexed, toes are not pointed, they're flexed. Right knee comes toward the direction of the camera. Now, interlace your hands behind your left thigh, elevate your left foot. If this is too intense, you can keep your left foot flat. Otherwise, stay right here. Relax your head, do not create any flexion in your neck. So now we're in reclined pigeon pose. You're on your back, knee bent, right heel just above your left knee. Interlace your hand, hands behind your left thigh. Relax your head, left foot is flexed. Press your right leg away. An additional variation for advanced practitioners, if you have a very flexible left leg, you can extend your left leg, find a yogi toe grip, right hand presses your right leg away. Okay, very slowly, if you are here, release your left leg, place your left foot to the ground, very slowly press your right leg away. As you inhale, right foot meets left. Now feet are spread really far apart on the outer edges of your mat, hands on either side of your hips. Exhale, drop your knees to the right side. Inhale, center. And then exhale, opposite side. Another perspective, feet about the width of the mat, inhale. Exhale, drop your knees to the right side. Inhale, center, flatten out your back. Exhale, drop your knees to the left side. Inhale, center. So now the opposite side, pigeon pose, or pigeon pose. Flatten out your back, different perspective. Left foot just above your right knee. You can stay right here if you have a really tight hips or really tight quad. If you'd like to go deeper, elevate your right heel, interlace your hands just behind your right thigh. Now you're pushing your left leg away with your left elbow while pulling your right leg forward. Here is another perspective. Push, left foot is flexed, pull. If you took the variation on the other side, maybe you can just extend your right leg, see how that feels. No need to lock your leg. There could be a very slight bend here. And hey, maybe you have a yogi toe grip. Exhale, 
and very slowly release your right foot, relax your right foot to the ground, and then your left. So same for the opposite side. So you're finding the outer edges of the mat, pressing your feet right there, like so. Take an inhale, and then as you exhale, drop your knees to the right side. Stay here for a breath this time. Inhale, deep breath. And exhale. This time, next inhale, knees toward the sky. And gently exhale, drop your knees to the left side. Inhale back to center. And now this time, as you exhale, inch your feet together. Press the soles of your feet together in refined butterfly pose. Separate your legs. Options here, a block even if you have a book. So we are about four minutes over, just um, you know, counting for time for those that are, you know, that do need to leave. I am gonna go over for an additional 10 minutes or more to incorporate a very slight inversion before a meditation. Up to you if you'd like to stay. Otherwise, if you are hanging around here, again, you can use your, a book to get creative with your yoga blocks and your support, a slight elevation for your heels, here or with that. Same pose in your reclined butterfly. Maybe your hands are on your thighs. If you have a jacket, if your neck hurts, you can always roll up your jacket, place it underneath your neck, like so. Make it a more restorative, relaxing experience. Placing your hands on either side of your hips. Feel the stretch of your thighs as you relax, as you breathe. Okay, next, inhale, begin to bend your knees, flatten out your feet. Inversion, basic inversion. Inversion just means upside down. So in this case, you're going to extend one leg, one heel, and then the next. So your legs are in an atypical position they, they are when you're walking, right, in the opposite direction. Your legs are straight, hands on either side of your hips, and flatten out your shoulder blades. If you'd like, you may use a wall. So I do happen to have a very small space here I can show you. If you'd like, you can try to use a wall for a more restorative option. If you are going to use a wall, what you want to do is you want to sit with one leg as close to the wall as possible. Okay, you're going to lay down on your back. You're going to lift your legs up and then shift your hips onto the wall. It's a more restorative option. If you have very tight legs, this might help. You might need to shift your hips further back if you have very tense legs. And then just try to relax your legs as you breathe. More advanced option, shoulder stand. You can do shoulder stand without using a wall or with the wall, so I'll show you with that to start. Okay, so knees are bent, hands are on either side of your hips. We're going to create momentum. Now, as you draw your knees toward your chest, you're pressing your palms as hard as you can into the earth. Okay, so you're pushing. Extend your legs up toward the sky. Your hands might start in your lower back about here. If your toes are behind your head, continue to walk your hands up toward your shoulders and extend your feet toward the sky. There are so many ways to get creative in this pose. You can do eagle legs, or you can do, let's start with tree pose, because we did tree, right? So you can do tree pose here. You can do half lotus in the pose. You can do eagle legs. If you're familiar with any variations, eagle legs left and right. You can do that. One of my most favorite ones that I've been practicing is I start with bending my right knee and drawing my right knee toward my forehead, shifting the weight toward my head very slightly. But this is a very advanced option. So if you have it in your practice, you can try. Otherwise, just stay in this pose or stay right here. Okay. I will not show any other deeper inversions like a headstand, tripod, forearm stand. If you have it in your practice, go for it. Take your time here. Otherwise, stay in any of the variations I offer. 
If you'd like to practice shoulder standing using the wall, which I recommend if you've never tried it before, here's a really great way to start. So as I said before, you're sitting up against the wall like so, laying on your back, and then swinging your legs up toward the wall. So there is no space between your hips and the wall. So you're bending your knees as much as you can, flattening out your feet, and then you are pushing into the wall. So notice all of a sudden your shoulders begin to lift. Okay. So you want to stack your hips over your shoulders and you can start with one toe. Extending one leg, hands on your back, and then the other. So you can always bounce like so. A couple of variations here. And to come out with control, hands on the ground, very slowly, so shoulder blades, upper back, middle then lower back pressing, presses into the ground. And you can drop your knees to one side, pressing your right palm in this case into the earth and then find a seated position. So I'm currently taking inversions, any variation of legs up the wall, shoulder stand if you're just joining, or eagle legs and shoulder stand, half lotus, full lotus, whatever that might be for you. Now wherever you are, very slowly come out with control. If you're coming from shoulder stand, I want you to think about your upper, Middle, so your palms are on the ground, upper, middle, lower, seal to the ground. So we're engaging our core throughout. Point your toes, heels slightly splay apart, so like so. Big toes connected, heels slightly splay apart, and very slowly place your feet to the earth. Okay, corpse pose. Before our meditation, you may take any variation you wish. This was a very slow practice, so there are many, many options and poses we may have missed that you were very interested in taking today. So at this time, you can take any pose you wish. Very often, happy baby is a popular one. You can take that, or you can just lay down in your corpse pose. I will offer a very quick guided meditation as you're laying down in corpse pose. In time, I see some of you are taking some postures like happy babies, so you can transition at your own pace and when you're ready. Okay, here we are. If you'd like, you have the option to find a seated position with your legs crossed, or if you'd like, you can also lay down. In the vinyasa practice, laying down is the most common form of meditation. And as you're laying down, or if you're in a seated position, or if you're sitting right in front of your computer, try and take a moment to, to relax, right? Relax your eyes, your face. Now that requires a lot of attention. And that's ultimately what the practice of yoga uh, uh, offers, right? So when we focus our attention on things, whether it's our body, on positivity, all of a sudden everything begins to unravel. So let's begin with the feet. As you're laying down or you're seated, your toes are gently relaxing. Allow your toes to melt away toward the earth, gently turning out 
Excellent. Allow your calves to sink deeper and deeper into the ground, right? So you're no longer creating any tension or harnessing any stress. Allow your calves just to melt into your mat. You're slowly inhaling, drawing in your breath through your nose. And now together as you exhale out of your mouth, take a really deep sigh, right? The breath of relaxation. Another very deep inhale in through your nose. Feel your chest rise like the beginning of class, right? Feel your chest rise, your shoulder blades pressing into the ground. Deep breath. And one more time. Exhale out of your mouth. Deep sigh. Good. Also called mind's breath. Now focusing on your thighs. Allow your thighs to gently relax. Maybe your toes and legs are turning out a little bit more as you lay down. Now shifting your attention completely and intently to your belly, noticing your back curve as you inhale. And then as you exhale, maybe your spine is pulling toward the earth through your belly button, flattening out your back. As you inhale, you might wanna shimmy your shoulders so your shoulder blades are pressing evenly into the earth. Begin to rotate your palms toward the sky. That's an external rotation as you expand your chest. And then as you exhale, begin to melt, relax each fingertip, pinky, middle, pointer, thumb, ring finger, every ounce of your hands, allow that to sink to the earth, your elbows, your body. Inhale, inviting your breath back into your body, inhaling into your nose. And this time as you exhale, very gently exhale out of your nose. Now very, very slowly as you can, as very slow as you can out of your nose. Double the length of your inhale, aim for that. One more time, deep inhale, feel your chest. Five, four, three, two, one, exhale, relax. I am going to incorporate um, my singing bowl as part of our breathing exercise. So I'm gonna tap the bowl as you inhale, feel your breath, try to match the length of the vibration, if you will, to your inhale and the very same as you as the exhale. Okay, so inhale. So wrap your arms around your leg, flatten out your back, good. Inhale, extending your right arm overhead. So we're in a laying position in corpse pose. And then as you exhale, so here we are, and this is the patient. And as you exhale, drop your knees to the right side. Left hand comes right in front of your heart. Inhale, pressing into a seated position. So you're pressing into your left palm. Legs are crossed, maybe legs are straight in front of you. As we come to a comfortable seated position, inhale together, extend your arms toward the sky, really reach your fingertips. Exhale, hands in front towards your heart, close your eyes. Remember to think positive thoughts, for thoughts become things. Inhale, thumbs to lips. Choose your words wisely. Use words that will build and not break, that will empower and not destroy. And as you exhale, thumbs to heart center. Seek the love and light that surrounds you. Seek the love and light that dwells within you. As we bow together in unison, saying namaste. Namaste. 
Thank you all that have uh, stuck with me for the remainder 18 minutes. I know I do tend to go over, um, but I hope you have. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, everyone. Diana, Sharon, Angela. I hope you all have a, an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Of your day. Now remember to stay positive and, and do your best to do something active in nature because it's a beautiful reminder of, of all the positivity in the world. And I uh, look forward to, yeah, namaste, Gwendolyn. I, I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach me um, via my email address through my website, papapranayoga.com, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, anytime. So nice to see you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. So nice to see you all. Thank you. Be safe. You too. Thank you very much. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Say thank you. Bye bye. 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 Nice to see you. Thanks, Jen. You're welcome. Bye, Sherry. Thank you. This is you. Thank you. Oh Anytime. Bye. Thank you. It's good. Thank you. Hi. Bye, Phyllis. Bye, Jen. <laughs>